G'day and welcome to Subbies TV. Yes, the first episode of 2013. I'm your host, Ninja. Welcome back. We're back. We're excited. And uh, here we go. Let's get straight into it. I'll intro my co-host for the year, who's replaced Marley, because Marley had a terrible meerkat accident. Um, so, Slamming, you're going to come on every now and then and help us out. How are you going, mate? Great to be here, Ninja. Thanks very much for the invite. You are welcome, and we'll see whether I'll regret that. Uh, our first guest for the day is, of course, Matt Holding, who does Holdings Bit. Matt, how are you? Yeah, good. Thanks, mate. Yeah, cheers for having me on. Welcome, welcome. And, of course, the new club to Suburban Rugby is Sydney Irish, and we've got Panda. 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 Just That's quickly, why Panda? Oh, the look of me, I think, yeah. is the expression for it, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, no, thanks for having me. Great to be on. No, excited to have you on and welcome to Suburban Rugby. Right, guys, before we get into everything, we've got a new section this year. We've got someone who's going to read out the weekly rap. We've got a female influence, so I'm going to throw it straight to Emily, Old Boys Barker, with the weekly rap. Thanks, Ninja. Hello and welcome to Subbies TV's weekly rap, where I take you through your weekend in rugby. Well, round one got off to a flyer with some big scores and even bigger upsets. In Division 1, we saw some tough fought matches with some unexpected results. Balmain's first game in the top division didn't go to plan, narrowly being beaten by Beecroft 22-17, while Mossman got the huge bonus point win against last year's Premier's Dremoyne 33-20. Taking a look at the table and Campbelltown sit on top after their win over Hunters Hill, followed closely by Knox, Mossman, St Pat's and Beecroft. Division 2 kept the theme of not playing well at home with four out of the five home teams losing. Brothers piled on the points in their win over King's Old Boys 45-7, while Linfield escaped with the win against Petersham 48-43. The table has Forrest sitting at the top followed by Brothers, Oatley and Linfield rounding out the top four. Division 3 was full of close games. The biggest margin came from Hawkesbury Valley 26-7 win over Waverley. While in the closest game of the week, Hornsby grabbed a great win over last year's semi-finalist Blue Mountains 21-15. Looking at the table and Division 3 is shaping up to be the one to watch. Division 5 had mixed results. Sydney Irish made it a good start to Subbies Rugby with a 42-17 win against the Vals, while Maccabee smashed Lane Cove 72-0. The table shows some strong contenders this season with four teams having 20 plus point wins. Finally in Division 6 we saw Chatswood start the year with a good win against International College of Management Sydney 22-19 while Dundas Valley were outclassed 96-0 against a hot to trot Clovelly. The table has Clovelly at the top with Manly Savers and Sydney Grammar Old Boys also grabbing bonus point wins. Well that's the weekly wrap for round one, back to you Ninja. Thanks for that, Emily. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think it's a plus having the rap <laughs> each week. Last year we seemed to take half the show talking about the scores. Um, it's funny, she highlighted a couple in particular. We'll just go through them. Um, Dremoyne on the weekend went down to Mossman, and I know the Dremoyne guys said to me, I'll bet you're going to bring it up on Subby's TV. Yes, I am. <laughs> I am going to bring it up on Subby's TV. And rightly so, being the Yeah, that's a huge premise. win. That's a massive win. I mean, Mossman, Emma Mossman boy, they've got some new guys in the club playing first grade, but... I mean, Dremoyne was missing, I think, a couple of their forwards, but their scrum was going backwards. So, huge win from Mossman. Well, I had a bit of a chat with some of the Mossman boys on Saturday night, and they're pretty confident that was a full strength Dremoyne side, no one missing. Really? Yeah. She's stirring at it early. <laughs> but I thought, I thought that you was. Some yeah. Mossman connections, don't you? Yeah, I know Just a couple of guys. Early. Yeah, get them early. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> get them early. No, oh, that's kind of biased. I think that, stuff on that, was a, um, that was a big. Massive win, a massive, and also um, Balmain's first game, you know, going down at home. But that's mm. it's a long season, and they've got a very strong club, mm. very strong shot. So yeah, and in Division Two, there was some huge scores uh, that she pointed out. Linfield and um, Petersham showed their defensive finesse. Oh, um, 48, 43. Unbelievable, mate. I'd, was it touch footy they were playing? I'm not quite sure. I don't real. know. I reckon they the tackle pads will be out. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> I've heard that that was a, just an absolutely awesome game as well. Yeah. Though. Um, and Linfield, uh, yeah. Did it stay a close? A lot of points. 
I know? think so, yeah. Yep. yeah. So I believe it was sort of like just hit for hit. So right. and, and, and down yeah. to the wire, the last points were scored. Yeah, oh. yeah. I think it was almost an after buzzer one. So might have to look at the defense. Defense. <laughs> Well, that's hey, know. that's what we want people to do. They send us videos of this stuff. We want those after buzzer tries. So send them in. But uh, you know, Division Three is very close. Division Five, of course, Sydney Irish got their big win. Yeah. Forty-two yeah. seventeen. Just quickly, that was a. What? Yeah, you know, our first game, we didn't know what to expect. We don't know what to expect, full stop, from any of the rugby we're going to be playing out here. We had no idea what Fairvale, Lansvale were going to be like, and just a huge team to play against. I mean, physically very big. and you know, we Just massive humans across the board. Just massive humans. And they, you know, they, they'd had little enough time to prepare themselves. And, you know, you could just see quality rugby players spread amongst them. Did you say, you were saying before the show that the winger was... Oh, 130 I mean, million kilos? I mean, he's, yeah, 130 <laughs> million kilos, that's exactly what I said, yeah. And, and pigtails to boot, but a very strong player, wow. and uh, yeah, don't get in his way. I'm so glad oh. I've changed positions this year. <laughs> yeah, I, I did five, but, um, our winger, Dave Sweeney, was, was panting himself, literally. Every, every yeah. time he got the ball, he was about this far from him, so he couldn't give him a yeah. run up. What about other options? Yeah, exactly, <laughs> you know. The, the dive at his feet and lay there, <laughs> hope he trips over me. You know, but, uh, the rugby yeah. speed bump. Yeah, exactly. Um, the only other score I wanted to go through that, that was highlighted was Dundas Valley. They, were, they did pretty oh. well last year. You know, they were competitive. 94 mm. nil. Were they there? I, I don't know. Not a good start. I don't know. That's not were you there, Dundas? Did you rock up? <laughs> we just send into us, write into us. We want to find out what happened there. But that was an you know, awesome weekly wrap by Emily there. And obviously the tables, we won't really go through it there. Yeah, it's round one. It's a just one other point, though. Ninja, it's good to see Chatswood get their yeah. first win of the season. That's right. And that out was of the way. That was against the uh, <laughs> the new club, wasn't it? Yeah, International yeah. College of Management, uh, Sydney. So they yeah. last year they were playing as a second grade side to Macquarie Uni or something. I think they were backups or maybe Halligans. I'm not sure, but You're good to see him up. And uh, hopefully they. Get a win this year, but well done, Chatswood. You've tied your record for last year. Oh, so harsh, harsh. <laughs> harsh. Yeah, harsh. Welcome to Southern. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right, guys. So let's have a look at the games of the week coming up. Now, we've, I've highlighted one in each division this week: Campbelltown, Dremoyne. What are our thoughts? Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. I, I, I like uh, I like the fact that Campbelltown's home record is just so strong for them. Um, Dremoyne are looking for a bounce back as well. Um, so you've got to sort of I yeah. think that that's going to be a really, really close game out there. Campbelltown are pretty hard to beat at home, mate. I yeah. totally agree with you. They, they got a great win against Hunters Hill. I mean, travelling to Hunters Hill, mm. you know, that's scored a few points effort. as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going with Dremoyne in that game, regardless. I think they're going to be snotty after losing the first one and come back and win. Yeah. Something to prove yeah. with that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think uh, that's going to be a great game. So mm. good luck to both sides. Uh, Division 2, Linfield and Forest. These guys have been competitive over the last couple of years. There's a rivalry. I don't think they like each other very much, which is so unheard of in the rugby circle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, like they're next door neighbours. They're next door neighbours, so they certainly have yeah, a bit of a clan rivalry going on. You know, and um, Linfield obviously got away with a big, <laughs> big win uh, last week in Forest. As Forest well, scored so. a lot of yeah. points too. They 53 to five. Yeah. St. Ives, so. yeah. I mean, they might be. Yeah, I'd, I'd say best defending team might actually win the game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get those tackle bags. Oh, don't bring it up. Um, yeah. We've got uh, Blue Mountains versus University of Western Sydney. Is that right? University yeah, UWSH yeah. for sure, I guess. But yeah, yeah. where is Walsh it? Free. Western Sydney. Right. No, but where is the actual game? Exactly? Oh, it's going to be played at their home ground. Oh, okay. Yeah, but okay. I mean, okay. that's that's probably not the furthest game. Blue I Mountains think have to travel. Yeah. No, no, yeah, so no. <laughs> to be honest, I think I'd back in the the Mountains boys. There's well, they yeah. they lost last week, and they were they were a finalist. Last yeah. year. So mm. that's why that's one of the reasons I think that um, it's game of the week for sure. Because mm. Blue Mountains, they, they're a strong side. They've, they've got some big boys. And a bit surprised they lost at home to uh, Hornsby last week, though. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe Hornsby's bounced back this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And then uh, we've got another big game down in fifth division. I'm just looking at the scores from last week. Maccabee, they won yeah. 72 nil, so yeah. they're going to be strong. And then uh, you know Redfield are a, a class outfit. They were club of the year last year. It's, it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, that should be a great game. And for for yeah. you guys, you'd be watching this closely. 
Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> we have to watch everything closely. We, we genuinely don't know who we're playing yeah. from week to week. We don't know. We don't ha understand the reputations that you have. You're talking about Redfield before we came on air about how good they are, club of the year, this kind of stuff. And, and genuinely, it means nothing to us. I mean, we, d we don't know the style of rugby to play. We don't know the players. You know, we simply just don't know. They so mean we come into everything. But that is that perfect. Perfect. <laughs> they are nothing to Sydney. <laughs> <laughs> that's a perfect. You're nothing. That's perfect, mate, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Not knowing means you don't have a we don't expectation. Have a, you know, we don't have a, a well, preconceived idea or something. No, you've got and, your yeah. own expectations. Got, got expectations. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you won't exactly, overthink your preparation as well. That's the thing, you're concentrating yeah. on your no, own game. No, that's it. I mean, we're playing. They don't know anything about you guys. I feel yeah. we're all really supporting Sydney Irish. <laughs> Come on, you should do. You should do the new people. We don't yeah. know yeah. anybody. Make us friendly. <laughs> <laughs> but, Come but and support you us. know, we're playing Lane Cove, and Lane Cove had a, had a tough loss last week, but we don't know what they're like. I mean, we yeah. don't, you know, and we don't know whether they had a rake of players missing or how good Maccabi are either. So, I mean, it means. It genuinely means nothing to us. We've just got to concentrate on ourselves and see how good. I, just you know, simple things. Said like a professional. Oh yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah. Uh, Division six. We've got the game of the week is between ICMS, the New Boys, and Manly Savers. Purely uh, because it's you know it's the local derby. Really, mm. they're up on the hill. Manly's yeah near the beach. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I I, I think the Savers will. I think going flog it points in, for and against. I yeah. think the Savers should get that. Relatively easy. Yeah. I mm. mean, Chatswood might be one of the strongest teams this year. We're not sure, but they only just they lost to Chatswood. So, yeah, if the surf's know. up, though, you never know. <laughs> wow. It's early for a <laughs> pun, but we've gone there. Listen, guys, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back right after this. The Bunker Studios in the heart of Sydney's CBD is a unique production space that specialises in producing online video content. Your audiences are five times more engaged and they are 85% more likely to buy products and services when you have video on your site. So whether you need small video campaigns or want to produce a live event that can interact with all your database, contact The Bunker Studios or visit our website. And welcome back to Subbies TV, episode one of 2013. Glad you are with us. All right, let's get straight into a bit of a Q&A with Sydney Irish. Where, where did they begin? How did it begin? And um, who was the driving force behind it? Oh, look, I mean, it has with all things Irish in a bar somewhere, Paddy Noble, <laughs> Val Baines, uh, sitting around there, there are chairman and secretary, um, two very, very good rugby players from, from home. And they sat around looking at what is an incredibly strong GAA uh, society, really, in, in Sydney. There's 10 GAA clubs. That's the equivalent of the AFL out here. Those teams have sort of two teams each, both hurling and Gaelic football. Um, so you can just see, just by looking at that, the numbers that are out here. Um, obviously, there's a gap in, in terms mm -hmm. of our love, which is rugby. <coughs> um, and they got in touch, and we said, look, let's, let's go with this. And very shortly thereafter, we, we, we put the put the word out to, to various people and we'd managed to scrape a, ga uh, scrape a team together. Yeah. Played three games in the Halligan Cup last year and it, and it literally snowballed from there. And, and we just got constant interest from people coming over and going, look, we'd love to play. What's the story? Can we get a game? And, yeah. and from then, I mean, we, we very all inclusive, not just Irish people, but we have, we have a, a really strong mix across the board and girls and guys. And we got involved in the, the tag leagues Oztag, yeah, yeah, Oztag yeah. leagues, and I mean, we, we had a, I think in the city, Sydney City one, we had a, you know, 112 players. Wow. Yeah. Jesus. So I mean, we had eight teams, eight or nine teams in that. I think yeah. it was a 20, te 20 team comp. Amazing. So yeah, yeah. yeah, we, you know, it was, it was. So uh, you comfortably sort of have the two grades. Well, it, it's so we, we have the two <laughs> grades. We're hoping we get a Halligan Cup team together for later on in the season here as well. Uh, as with everybody, all the teams, you know, we've got guys who work on a Saturday and they can't make yeah. it, or they, you know, and it's it's in and out like that. Poor excuse. Poor yeah. excuse. <laughs> oh yeah, word. but uh, you know, boat rate team, your boat rate teams that are all right? boat racing team. Yeah, yeah, you we're we're very right? very strong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have to say. So that's yeah. a challenge then. I'm oh no, absolutely, uh, absolutely. We're going to be we're going to be Sydney filming Irish that. Sydney Irish have said that yeah. they're the best boat racing team yeah. in all of suburban rugby. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah, no in doubt. The world. I'm, I'm what, the world, the world, wow! In the world, yeah, I'm claiming that right now. So, what's what's the major goal for Sydney Irish? Like, oh, look, I mean, do you uh, want to go up to Division Three? Uh, do you want to work your way to Division One? Yeah, look, I mean, I think uh, I think we've got to be aware that you know we're a new club, but yep. at the same time, uh, we want to consolidate what we have, but we want to grow as well. And we think we'll be getting numbers. We're co constantly getting numbers. People coming down to training, and it's a very you know where we're based. We're based out of Latham Park, and 
you know, Randwick Rugby were very good to us in, in relation to getting us in there. And, uh, you know, being sort of that area, Coogee, Bondi, you know, they're known at home as County Coogee and County Bondi. For the amount <laughs> yeah. of, quite seriously, for the amount of Irish who were down there. And once we got the locale right, you know, we, we got people coming in the whole time and, and hopefully we'll be able to expand. And the idea will be to go up, uh, but... But uh, you know, we've got to take our time about it and make sure we don't jump too quickly. That's brilliant. Yeah. Congratulations, mate. Yeah, it's a fantastic effort. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Well, you have nice like a, a bit of a, a high turnover of players, considering mm. you know some people are like out here on uh, working yeah, holidays yeah, or yeah, yeah. for a couple of years. Is that going to be a problem in holding on to some you know, players, maybe? When we had to do the the application for the for subbies and put all our documentation through, we had to literally go and, and look at sort of the stats of people coming over. <laughs> mm. Julia Gillard and her fans will talk hey, about. Hey, well, you're protecting other gingers, I understand. Nothing but against redheads. <laughs> Nothing against redheads on this panel. Yeah, exactly. What's wrong with the redhead in charge? Only a ginger can call another ginger ginger. Yeah, it's our word. Yeah, yeah. So, but regardless you, of that, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thank you, Tim. Yeah, but um, you know, she's talking about four five sevens and the, the visa thing, and that's yeah. genuinely there's there's ten thousand Irish people on four five seven visas coming into coming to Australia and coming into Sydney. You know, yeah. I mean, crazy crazy numbers. And you know it's because of the recession at home and, and what's going on, and we've got a you know very skilled workforce. Oh, we at love home. the Irish here. Keep coming. And and you know we're just coming over. St. Patrick's, Patrick's Day. Take getting all bigger your and jobs. Bigger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've only got one day at the moment. Yeah. 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 The price of Guinness is going up in Dublin as well at the moment. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, brilliant. Well, I, I think best of luck to Sydney Irish. Thank this you year very much. Much um, appreciated. It. It's awesome when you get a club like that. It's so yeah. passionate. So, awesome. Cheers, mate. Yeah, Let's nice move on. Uh, Thanks, Matt, awesome. you've got holding spits. You do it every year. Yep. And um, you, you sp just explain it a bit for the guys at home that don't quite know what holding spits are. Yeah, is. so uh, I got asked by uh, a few of the guys to sort of uh, carry on from uh, a guy called Hodgie who used to do Hodgie's Bits, and uh, yep. they decided to keep the name Holdings Bits. So, uh, yeah, started last year. It's and very creative just taking yeah. the last yeah, yeah, I know. Holding so bits. Yeah. Or, original, yeah. yeah. Um, big, big marketing budget then. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, so it's it's been it's been reasonably successful. Uh, we get quite a few people who read it every week. I can yep. sort of keep a track of a few numbers and uh, and feed that back. Um, so it's just a, basically some a uh, bit of a wrap of the week. Yeah. Um, a few tips of mine. Some really awful jokes. Um, I, know, I know you. Jokes. I know you like them. Terrible <laughs> jokes. They are shocking. Um, yeah, so so there's jokes that you laugh at because they're so bad. Pretty much. Yeah. Right. yeah. <laughs> Which are great. Dad jokes? Um, are they yeah. similar yeah, to dad jokes? pretty much, yeah. But so I, I, I think it's a great just platform <laughs> to... Because you also advertise if there's a particular, um, you know, fundraiser or anything like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll try and put a few different segments in and um, just for my own enjoyment as much as anybody else. So there's a, <laughs> there's a Broken Bones segment this week, so look out for that. comes out on uh, Friday mornings. So right. um, Broken Bones. Yeah, okay. and uh, any content that uh, you want to send in, whether it be a video, a match report, um, anything that you've got ongoing at your club, um, if you can just send that to WBAMAT at hotmail.com. That'd cool. be great. Cool. So holding spits. So look out for that every Friday. It is put on the website. Yeah, on Subby's uh, website. Um, yeah, send stuff in if you if you have anything you want to be in holding spits. If you want to be in his bits, <laughs> send Most in material. Do. Awkward. <laughs> oh, that's Very <laughs> awkward. Terrible. All right, let's go through this one real quick, guys. It, it's something we discussed towards the end of last year with Subby's, and we it's come up again, of course, start of the season. Colts. Colts mm. play at uh, so many different times, and. It, Every year there's that discussion of what time should they play. Should it be the first of the day, the last of the day, let's say a night game, or, or you know, just throw them in the middle and they can back up for the bigger grades. I mean, Slam, and you were, you were a coach of Colts last year? Yeah, yeah, last couple of years, yeah. And you and were a Colt 50 years ago? Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, what's your opinion on this? A fair few years ago. <laughs> yeah. Mate, um, to be honest, Colts are looking better maybe at the end of the day, from my perspective. Yeah. Uh, getting the under 20 one-year-old kids to rock up at 9.30 in the morning. Not hung over. Not hung over. You know, they're all at uni, they're all yeah. having a lot of fun. No one wants them to stop doing that. And mm. they'll literally not either choose not to turn up as opposed to not having fun the night before. Yeah. Um, having it sit between sort of third grade, second grade becomes very disruptive for the rest of the club. Um, in terms of selection being overseen, maybe some Colts would get selected over third grade players for a second grade standby. Um, 
obviously third graders are trying to get up into the second grade. Backing up as well with that. Do you break, think? Yeah. Do you think on average though that the Colts have the talent to play second and first grade? Oh, I think like, absolutely. If you, out of a squad of you know twenty two or whatever, you you think that half of those players have the ability? Mate, last year I had forty Colts available. Um, these guys also disappear, ski trips, etc., yeah. holidays. Um, mm. You can lose. 20 of those straight off the bat and then you can also yep. end up with injuries and so forth and you're short for a game halfway through the season. Yeah, cool. mm. So it, it's a difficult process to manage. Um, you try working through rotations to give everyone a go. You obviously want to look after your talent but in saying that there is some significantly talented players that are yeah. 20 years of age. So what would you could, say? Afternoon, you think that, that should think be last game of the day? Last game of the day, you know, night games are, are a privilege. I and and also first graders get an opportunity to have a beer and, have and, a beer watch, and some watch some footy, footy for a yeah. change. Mm. Because they don't rock up earlier in the day to watch. Yeah. <laughs> what are you saying? Wow. You like. heard it here first. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think? First um, or last or middle? In terms of quality, I saw some absolutely sensational Colts games um, over the last couple of years even. Um, so I think I don't think that's that in question. Me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so yeah, in, in, in terms of in terms of that, I don't really think that's a question. Um, timing can be can be difficult, difficult as yeah. we as we talked about um, before the show as well. In the fact that it's it's just fitting it in with your, your club schedule and not everybody agrees as well, which is difficult. Yeah. Um, so I think I uh, agree with the, the first game of the day. It's tif difficult to get to get everybody there and, and you also want a lot of support for the Colts because mm. some people need a lot more encouragement um, and like and myself yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no, pushing for enough. higher grades so yeah so you don't really mind where yeah I, I, I mean yeah it's difficult I, like, I kind of like them at, at, at first or last in the, in the middle I think it's just put, put them in last have their friends and girlfriends and whatever else turn up pushing on the girlfriends <laughs> exactly no but seriously get them to yeah, come down the clubs can make more money out of it all that kind of <laughs> stuff have a big night uh, board and you know that carry on till late in the evening yeah, exactly suppose, you know, yeah. You know. No, brilliant mm -hmm. all right well it's it's always a discussion and i don't think it'll ever change it'll, it'll constantly mm. go up and down but yeah i think last is day as well uh now it's time for media madness where we've got <laughs> i've loved that i've named this this year Idiot. Media madness. We've got photos and an uh, awesome video sent in. But this first one's uh, just sent in from the Barker setup. So that's them on the on the weekend. Looking good there, Barker. And uh, another one here from St. Eyes versus Forest. They look like they're about to kick off, but um, facing the wrong way. One of the guys is still in the kicking there. <laughs> but uh, this next one um, is from colleagues. Now, the guy that sent it to me said that uh, he's going to get killed for sending this in but big man tom healy here is on the left there wearing the king's uh jumper very stylish and he uh yeah he came across from east and he's just started playing with colleagues but he's a very handy guy he used to be the 2001 gps 100 meter champion so has nice. some wheels so or welcome to colleagues um first look alike of the year colleagues fifth grade prop stubby that's love that. <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> we love the look alikes they're good uh here's me over in hong kong Hong Kong Sevens with I ran into uh, Nobody's an interested, old coach. Ginger. Come on, Ninja. Hand of hand. Big glass of water in your hand, then, Ninja. Yeah, yeah. really. Yeah, I, I don't drink. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, Mark Green, of course, who is one of the suburban rugby executives. He's yeah, yeah, looking is stylish he a ref? there. Is Greeny. he going to be a ref? Uh, I don't think so. No. <laughs> Trying to emphasize. So he's yeah. just a thief. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Still yeah. jersey. And then Sydney Irish struggle on that's the first grade. Yeah. Who's that leading out the pack? <laughs> Barry Duffy, you silly little man. <laughs> <laughs> Barry, he copped it on the weekend, didn't he? He from, did. Uh, he, did. Uh, he, got, he, he got he got serious abuse. Now Barry's not our captain. This is the oh. first thing you should know about. But such right. was his enthusiasm to, to get out on the pitch. He um, jogged out there first. He jogged out there first. So as far as I'm concerned, he's getting everything he deserves. First yeah, game right. for first grade, and he just went. <laughs> yeah, well, well. He, such was the enthusiasm. You can't wow. hold a good man. He, he actually he, he had a great game. <laughs> really? game. What position so did he play? He was playing full back. Had a great game. He's actually only 18 years back. old as well, despite the uh, despite the hair loss. There and, you go. Wow. Yeah. Jeez. Brilliant. No, he's not 18. <laughs> 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 yes, he had me sold. Had me sold. Very well developed for an 18. We're just going to play a quick video sent in from Campbelltown. So I'll, I'll show you the vid first and then I'll, I'll talk about it. So it's just here. So that 
that little guy there in the middle of the video has been doing the celebrations with the boys since he was two years old, apparently. And uh, they've just said he's now a member of the junior club. I mean, what a champion. Yeah, oh, that's amazing. impressive, brilliant. mate. That's how you've got to start them these days. Yeah, um, absolutely brilliant. I've got a couple of young kids myself, and I'm trying to blood them into rugby as early as possible. And, but to have that enthusiasm and to be running the first grade song, yeah. So, I mean, and how good is that? I mean, and that's what you wanted. Campbelltown, I think, are a pretty family oriented club as well. But that's that's what you want. You want the supporters involved. So, yeah. what a legend. Brilliant. And he's yeah, running brilliant. around juniors, and I bet you he's going to be a superstar. So, good work to that. Yeah. And thank you <laughs> Absolutely. to everyone who sent in uh, pictures, etc., for <laughs> media madness, <laughs> what everybody <laughs> called it. Hectic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, club announcements now. On the weekend, Brothers player Paul Gibbs played his 100th game, so a big shout out to him and well done. That's, that's a great effort playing 100 games. Mm. Uh, Mossman have their Ladies' Day on the 4th of May, so that's going to be supporting breast cancer awareness. So jump onto the Mossman webpage and you can find all the details. Um, also, we are still, of course, looking for sponsors. So this is a plug out to those sponsors. Get behind us because without you guys, we can't do this show. So if you want to be a sponsor of Subbies TV, jump on and email me at info at subbystv.com.au. And likewise, uh, a big thank you to the clubs that have got behind us so far. We still would love the other clubs to get behind us. So if, again, email in and uh, the more the merrier. And if you have any photos, videos, anything like that, as we just saw with the little guy from Campbelltown, it's awesome. We love seeing that stuff. We want to see the tries out in the last minute. We want to see the big hits. So send all your stuff into rugbystuff at subbystv.com.au. And uh, yeah, I might also jump in there as well, yep. Ninja, just to uh, give a bit of a plug to the uh, the Subby's Twitter page. Ah, as the well. Twitter page, yeah. Um, yeah, we're getting quite a few followers on that. Um, last year it was a big success with our Man V Food Challenge, so yep. might, uh, get that up and running again this year. And uh, so what's the drag yourself along? It's just that. Subby's uh, Twitter. What's the Twitter? Yeah, at Subby's Rugby. At yeah. Subby's Rugby. There you go. Yeah. At Subby's Rugby. Easy. Get on board. All right, cool. So just wrapping up now. Uh, we've got our dark horse. We've got some good matchups this week. Mossman versus Balmain. Mossman. Home, Campbelltown, Des Moines, Beecroft and Hunters Hill, Colleagues and Iggy's, and Knox and St. Pat. Slam and start with you. Who's your dark horse? Uh, Knox, mate. Knox? Yep. Go Knox over Pats. Absolutely. They got a good win last week. Pats got a good win last week. So, yeah, that's an upset. I think, sure. I think yeah, the, uh, uh, I've got to agree there, actually. Um, I think uh, Pats, it was a good win, but um, Knox, yeah. You, Throw them in as the dark horse at home. Why not? Really he got pandered knowing everything you about know, these teams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, Knox had a good win. I'll give you that. But, no, yeah, I'm going to go with Knox. Fine. Go with Knox as well. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go different then. I was going to go <laughs> Knox. But I, I think um, I think Hunter's Hill over Beecroft. There you go. That's my dark horse. Deal with it. <laughs> All right, guys. Slam and thank you for today, Matt. Panda, you Cheers, all have been legends. Uh, make sure you keep supporting Subbies TV. Jump on the Facebook page as well. And until next week, enjoy your rugby.